honorable members of parliament, distinguished guests, dear Tom, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to thank all of our parliamentary friends for being here with us tonight. And to extend a special thanks to our sponsors uh, of the event, which of course marked 35 years since the crimes inflicted upon Cyprus and the Cypriot people in July 1974. For 35 long years, the will of the international community has been defied by Turkey. For 35 long years, Turkish troops have continued to occupy northern Cyprus with impunity. They have created and sustained in the occupied areas an illegal regime which no one other than Turkey recognizes, in contravention of the UN Charter and international law. During this long period, countless Turkish people from Turkey have been transferred to live in the occupied area in a deliberate policy executed by Turkey to change the demography of the island. During the same period, Cypriot properties have been usurped and are exploited for economic gain. Cultural and religious sites, the cultural heritage of the island in the north of Cyprus, has been deliberately desecrated and destroyed. And to this day, Turkey refuses to investigate hundreds of cases of missing people, people who went missing during its military invasion in 1974, contrary to the rulings of the European Court of Human Rights, which Turkey blatantly disregards. All of these things have been done and continue to be done in the 20th and the 21st centuries before the eyes of the whole world by a country that is knocking on the door of Europe that has just been voted as a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council and which is often held up as an example of a democratic state in the Islamic world. A Europeanized Turkey a Turkey that fulfills a positive and constructive role in the world, a truly democratic Turkey, is a strategic imperative for all of us. Even more so for a small island, for a small island state, a neighboring state to Turkey, a state like Cyprus, whose very existence and survival depend not on its military might, but on international law and order. Turkey has a unique opportunity in the current climate of the direct negotiations that are taking place on the island. It has a unique opportunity to change its intransigent stance in relation to the Cyprus issue, to demonstrate that it is a country willing to change this change must mean that Turkey recognizes the Republic of Cyprus, a member state of the European Union, which Turkey is seeking to join. It means that it must end the island's military occupation and the division which it sustains by force of arms. But Turkey needs to understand, too, that it will not be accepted as a member of the European Union without a solution in Cyprus that is freely negotiated by the Cypriots themselves. Turkey must understand that it will suffer a cost 
if it refuses to allow a settlement based on the UN Charter and the principles of European and international law. The United Kingdom, a close ally of Turkey, with historic responsibilities to Cyprus, must exert real pressure on the Turkish government to support with deeds, not merely with words, because unfortunately words are cheap even in the world of international diplomacy. To support therefore with acts and deeds the true unity of the island. You ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, as members of parliament here in the United Kingdom, long-standing friends of Cyprus, you have the platform and you have the opportunity in this House of Commons to remind the UK government of its obligations to Cyprus and to speak out in the name of justice for Cyprus. Thank you very much.